and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda Nathany, and for the next hour, we're going to learn about perfect companions. So with the warm weather coming up and summertime quickly approaching, vacations maybe on your radar or already on your calendar, we're going to talk a little bit about our furry little children and how we can better prepare them for um, whatever happens to come once school gets out. So before I begin, I would like to, as always, um, invite you to email me at talk at bcattv.org. Even though we are live, we can no longer accept calls, so there's no phone number, so you get to email. Lucky you. Um, and as always, um, I would like to thank the crew for this evening. John Vias is one of the staff members here at BCAT, and he makes sure all of us volunteers know what we're doing and make sure that everything runs smoothly. So thank you, John. We also have lots of volunteers for this evening who have given up their Wednesday evenings. We have Christina Nikitas, Gwyneth McNamee, Evan McNamee, Evan Peckham, and Noel Donahue. So thank you everyone for giving up your Wednesday evening. Come hang out at BCAT. And I usually thank my husband Paul for staying home for daddy date night, but uh, the, the date night's actually here. So um, daddy gets the night off. So, all housekeeping aside, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful guest, Jennifer Ingraham, Hi. also known as Jen. Also known as Jen. Also known as Jen. Yes. And you are the volunteer coordinator mm -hmm. at Lowell Humane Society. Yes, I am. Wow. Yeah. And you just told me before that you're kind of new to that role. I am new to the role, but not new to the organization. Ah. I've been with the organization about seven, eight years, okay. and I'm on my fourth month in an official <laughs> role. But So I'm, you are now yeah, coordinating I, I'm now the coordinating volunteers. the people that I once was. <laughs> Which makes it great yeah. for being able to relate to a hundred what they need and what they, going what they need what they um what they deserve um yes all of that girl after my own heart yes so before we get into talking about the animals mm -hmm. and the human uh lowell humane society mm -hmm. how did you, you know can you tell me a little bit about yourself where you grew up how you came to the burlington area mm -hmm. and what made you decide to go into animal rescue? All right, I love it. So I grew up in Lowell, actually. Oh. I'm a Lowellian. Um, oh, was that what they call? Oh, okay. no, that's what I'm calling them. All right. Um, so yeah, born and raised in Lowell and uh, educated at UMass Lowell. Um, I had family who lived up in Burlington, so I knew the area. Um, love it up here. So yeah, um, animals have always been a part of my life. Um, from everything from working with uh, corals and insects now up through your oh, average wow. pets. So yeah, okay. I've done a little bit of everything and I'm wow. passionate about animals and animal care. And do you happen to have a pet at home? Yes. More I, than one? <laughs> no, more than one. Um, and I'm actually at a low point right now. I've had way more, but currently I have two cats that I own. I have two foster kittens Ooh. that I'm temporarily in custody of. And I have a guinea pig. Now, does the guinea pig get along with the cats, or yes. is the guinea pig does yeah, he or she have yeah. their own yeah, room? Yeah, my girl cat likes my guinea pig a little more than maybe the guinea pig likes her, but uh, they get along pretty good. Okay, because <laughs> I wasn't sure about that, you know, because well, guinea pigs are big enough, but if it was yeah. like a hamster, I'd be afraid Hamsters, it would become a toy. No, exactly, a <laughs> toy size. But a uh, guinea pig, it's uh, more a uh, toy for a dog than a cat. They seem okay. to know that this is a friend. Okay. And what made you start volunteering at the Humane Society? I was actually friends with our now executive director, Crystal Arnott, okay. and uh, she t told me how what they did at the Lowell Humane Society. I had adopted an animal many years prior, okay. but I didn't realize they had this full functioning, vibrant, um, oh, wow. yeah, a volunteer program. And so I was like, all right, I'll, I like animals. I'll okay. give this a shot. <laughs> and um, yeah, they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> there you go. So I've done. You're there to stay. Now. I'm there to stay, and then eventually I made them hire me. So here I am. I love it. <laughs> I love it. 
so yeah, so I've done a little bit of everything from animal care to transports to fostering animals. What kind of animals do you generally shelter? Is it just like dogs and cats? Do you have mm -hmm. birds, reptiles? Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, tarantula. The, no, <laughs> great question. Most people associate us with obviously like our logo, a dog and a cat. Um, Those uh, tend to be the more popular ones. Hundred percent. So much more. We do guinea pigs, chinchillas, ferrets, birds. We oh, have okay. many parakeets right now, okay. and sometimes we get even the more exotic birds. Um, we don't do reptiles too often. We just don't have the facility for them to okay. correctly. And but when we do receive them, we give them good care and transport them to some place we can is better equipped for them. Right. How do you determine? I mean, yes, I have the checklist, but yeah. I'm just like no, stream just of consciousness. Exactly. Um, you mentioned that you were foster, mm -hmm. but there's also the shelter. Mm -hmm. So how do you as the organization determine who gets to stay in the shelter and who gets to go home with yeah. a foster? That's a really good question. I like that. So it's a little bit of everything. So our animal care staff looks at the needs of the animal. Are they too young? Like right now, it's kitten season. Oh, we okay. have so many little kittens <laughs> and fosters. Oh, no. oh. It's a good problem to have, they're adorable. Um, but yeah, so we want them to be with a family so they get that socialization and that round the clock care. Okay. Is it a medical issue? Again, that round the clock care. Is it maybe you're looking for a dog to get out of the kennel and be in a home and be socialized okay. and de-stress? Those oh, are the fosters yeah. that we're looking for. Okay. And if anyone wants to foster, come How do you become yes. a foster? Let's How do you become a foster? You can email me, jen at mollhumanesociety.org. Go to our website, fill out an application. Um, what are some of the qualifications that mm -hmm. you need? Like, do really? you have to have a, a fenced in yard? Or? Um, it would be preferable. We do check to see, like, you know, can you have animals in your house? You know, if you're renting, that's a concern. That's true. Um, okay. Do you have a separate space for your animals? Because we don't want your animal um, at home maybe mingling with our animals just because, you know, kitty colds, basically, oh, URIs, stuff yeah. like that. We do a for full like medical health Yeah, issues. we do a okay. full medical exam, but, you know, things take eight days to incubate. Things get past That's us. That's true. So we want to make sure everyone reduce the vet safe. bills yeah. overall. <laughs> overall, everyone's safe, happy, healthy. Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking for. Do you have a safe, secure space? Do you have the time? Do you have, you know, the knowledge? And we provide the knowledge, all the 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 stuff you'll need, all the equipment, the food, everything. That's we give it all to you. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I figure if you were the foster, you're kind of accepting. You can totally buy your own supplies. I mean, that's awesome. But, but don't we do let not that stop expect you. it. Oh, yeah. We okay. don't expect it. I will give you everything happily. <laughs> now is there like a training program mm -hmm. that you have to go through? How long does that it's, training or it's, vetting process? It's not very long. There's a general orientation. I hold those once a month. Um, and then from there, I send out, it's basically now I've done it online. It's a YouTube video that I oh, send cool. you the link. And you just watch me talk at you for about 40 <laughs> minutes and answer a little quiz so I know you heard me talk at okay. you. So you actually paid attention. Attention, and you know like these like four or five key things. And then from there, we'll match you up with uh, an animal in need. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. And how many times does the foster animal not go back to a new family and stays with the foster. See, that's, that is my biggest fear about <laughs> becoming a foster for yes. a pet. Because if I get a kitten in my house, that kitten is staying <laughs> that is, for a really long time. Yes, that is your kitten now. And I, yeah, I, I totally <laughs> I get that. I didn't do it all. Yes, that is, it is hard. It is hard. Um, I am a foster fail mom. <laughs> like I have kept guinea pigs who were bored in my living room and then stayed with me for the remainder of their lives. So it happens, 
but more often than not, I have given my foster back to, okay. with a tear in my eye, but knowing that they're going to a really good I home. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, I was telling you earlier that a um, former colleague of mine mm -hmm. is a foster, and I asked her the same question, and she says, well, just knowing that they're going to a good home. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. you know, fortunately, you know, through the wonders of Facebook, we're always posting cat pictures and about how goofy our cats are. And she's like, oh, they look so happy. I'm like, I know, but I want another kitten. Um, <laughs> Exactly. But, you know, with kittens come vet bills and, you know, there's with, only, yeah. With kittens come kitten responsibility, which as cute and fluffy and adorable as they are, they can be little menaces and they need all the shots and all the things. And yes, it's 100%. Um, just so you know, if you do adopt an animal from us, even a foster sale, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. They are spayed and neutered, and they are up to date on all their vaccines before you even bring them home. Like, we make sure that's included in the price. Of so that's yeah. one of the reasons why there is that adoption fee. Exactly. It's because you need, how do you get the vet care, veterinary care? Do you have a vet, uh, veterinarian on staff we or is there do. somebody that just comes in we have a little column a little column b we have a fabulous veterinarian named dr brady who um she is there we are starting our own clinic which is very Ooh. exciting we are really adamant about providing um resources for the community that oh. can people can keep their animals so that the vet bills they have a, a reasonable price Okay. Place to bring their animals if they are having issues um, providing food for their animals. We now have a food pantry oh, for wow. pet food that the lovely at the Humane Society yeah, building. Yes, wow. exactly. So people donate their food to us, cat, dog, what have you, and we can distribute it to people. Oh, wow! Need. So it's really cool. We're really trying to make that happen, and that means our animals who are in our care also get that same great oh, wow. level of veterinarian. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, before I reached out to you and Crystal, mm -hmm. I did a little bit of research, and apparently May is pet month. Oh. Well, in our house, every month is pet month. Same. Didn't um, know is there was actually a is <laughs> spoiled cat month. 100%. Um, why does having a designated pet month, what does that mean to you? Is um, It's always good for fundraising opportunities okay. <laughs> on social media and such. Be like, it is pet month and look at this adorable pet. <laughs> uh, look at this happy tail. We love to show like happy oh, tails like okay. this animal was adopted and look at this fabulous life he's now or she's now having. Um, so yeah, what pet month means to me, it should be every month, as well, like you said. <laughs> spoil them rotten. Yes, the cats, it's definitely. It's really hard not to spoil them. Why is it not? <laughs> yes. Yeah, 100%. It's all about me, hello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love my dogs, but I'm a cat person, so. <laughs> so yeah, pet month is just a great way to just um, maybe get people's more pe eyes on us and what we do. I love that. I love that people put these designated days and months together. Yeah. Excellent. I'm remembering a long, like years ago, um, you used to go to like a shopping mall and there'd be a pet store yes. where you could buy kittens or puppies or rabbits. That doesn't seem to be as popular anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still go to a breeder or go somewhere yes. else. Why is it important to adopt from a shelter? Well, look, I mean, I'm here, obviously, <laughs> pro shelter. Um, adopt, don't shop. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I understand that people want, oh, A, B, and C, especially dogs, right? People want that hypoallergenic, that... Uh, certain breed that speaks to them. 
I'm here to say with a little bit of research, you can get those breeds oftentimes at our shelter. Oh, okay. um, and if you have something particular in mind, talk to us. Put, a, put an adoption form on file. And if that oh. animal comes in, we will contact I you. I was going to ask yeah. about that. Because, yeah. you know, my, I, I mentioned before that my husband always grew up with Siamese. Yes. And finding a Siamese cat in a shelter it's is not few easy. and far between. Hundred percent, because those are expensive, sought after cats. Um, but it, you know, it does happen, um, particularly with dogs. People will be like, "Oh, I want this dog," and then the terrible twos might come, oh. and they didn't realize what maybe having yeah. a dog truly means and the amount of work that is required. So. You may get that Labradoodle at a shelter. It is completely possible. Because also, um, dogs' puppy phase is like two years. Yes, exactly. And I think people think it's that first six months, similar to like a kitten. Yeah. And even with a kitten to a cat, those first two years, they're very kittenish. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it really is that two and years of. Sometimes dogs just stay toddlers forever. <laughs> yes, they totally can. So you really need to know what breed your, what, what is your lifestyle and what can we match that with? Okay. Are you like a really athletic outside type of person? Well, come to our shelter. We have a husky waiting for you. Oh, but if awesome. you want like maybe a lap cat and someone who's like a little bit older and calmer, mm -hmm. we have that too. So and if you want a lap dog, you probably we probably don't want to that. get like a sheep dog. No, definitely, <laughs> like probably really would not want our current hunter who is like a coon hound. You don't think that would be too much for you. <laughs> he's adorable and we love him, but he's an active boy. Okay. So you want someone a little calmer, a little probably on the older side. So we started talking about that, but... Mm -hmm. How do you know what kind of pet is right for you? Mm, that's a good like, question. Yeah. When somebody comes in and says, I want to adopt a dog. Yes, and we get that on the daily. I want a dog. I just want okay, a dog. What kind of dog? And they're like, a dog. And it's like, okay. Does and it bark? I don't want exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You just kind of have to be like, well, here's what we have available. And then ask those leading questions, like I just said. What is your lifestyle? Do you have kids at home? So oh, we need to know. Okay. Or other animals, is this gonna be, are you more like a quiet person? Maybe it's just you, you and a spouse or a significant other, or is it a full raucous family? We need to okay. know that thing so we know which animal kind of oh. fills those slots. Okay. Because all of our animals go through um, a meet and greet with other dogs, other cats, strangers. We want to see how they respond to different okay. scenarios. I was just about to ask you, how do you do that socialization? Yeah. Because when I've been to various shelters, mm -hmm. um, either volunteering or just kind of looking, just um, <laughs> browsing, it always says, you know, <laughs> Good with cats? Yes, no. Good with, you know, must be single, you know, must be mm -hmm. the only pet in the house. Right. You know, okay around older kids, not younger kids. How do you determine that? That's great. So what, basically, it's a combination of things. If we are lucky enough to have spoken to the previous owner, okay. we have an intake, we do an interview process where okay. we get to know what were your animals likes, dislikes, what was the environment, et cetera, so we can get like a baseline. Okay. And then we go on into that testing protocol I told you about where we can go and bring our dogs over by the cat, you know, cages and see do they have a reaction? Are they like scared? Oh my God, it's a cat. Or like- Cat right. might be freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> we try to do it with the common cats. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah, of course, we don't want to needlessly don't stress anyone out. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's stressful enough for these animals. They're like, why am I here? And it takes them a few days to kind of bring mm -hmm. down to baseline. 
Um, but yeah, so we just try to give them these little tests to see how do they react to different stimuli. Okay. And from there, we can kind of get a sense, this is an older kid dog, or this is a cat that can go home with anybody, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm one of my former cats. <laughs> as long as he's an only child, oh, he thinks he's an only child. Aww. Very demanding of attention. <laughs> Um, the cat that just went home today, um, I'm going to miss her, and her name was Luna, or still is probably, but um, she's 21 pounds. She came in as, like, she's like a little basketball. <laughs> um, <laughs> 21 pounds is a big cat. It's a little big. Maine so, Coon at all? No, okay. no oh. just a little <laughs> overweight, a little chunky. A little chunky. But, yeah, so she had these, she was love motivated, and it was so great. So if I had a tour with um, Girl Scouts, say, and they came in, and everyone would just go, and she'd go up and down stairs and run <laughs> around the cage. And she's now getting her exercise, and now every kid is, like, happy because <laughs> they could pet this cat. <laughs> so she's an example. She could go home with anybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that she found a home. Yes. Thank you. We are, too. We'll miss her, though. But well, how, leading into my next question, how long was Luna at the shelter, and mm -hmm. how long is the average stay is there an average there really is stay. and i get that question so often and there isn't an average stay we don't have a time limit that animal is with us as long as they are able to we don't do anything unless it's medically necessary because okay. or super behavioral it's not very often so we just had a dog um that was in our shelter for about a year and then wow. we found her her forever, <laughs> her forever home. home i love it f u r -E yes home. yes so we will wait the dog is in our care and we will do the best by or the cat or the whatever um and they'll be with us until we find that that's do you do match. like little features on oh. your website oh yes yeah. so if you follow us on um especially Facebook or okay. Instagram or TikTok, you will see. Yeah, I'd be afraid to, f <laughs> I think I, I have liked you, I, I've liked on Facebook, but yes. go into those websites and it's just browsing, oh, let's see. It, it can be difficult, <laughs> espe it, especially being in the shelter day in a day out. How do you not go home with a new cat every day? <laughs> um, I've already adopted one, and I just <laughs> said I've been there um, in my official capacity for four months, so. Yeah, I think I'm done for the moment, but we will see. <laughs> so, okay, so we talked mm -hmm. about, you know, um, staying in the shelter, and earlier you mentioned if someone is surrendering yeah. their animal. When, when do people surrender? Is it, or mm -hmm. is there a specific reason? Um, it's a various reasons and it's always very sad and yeah. stressful for those people. Um, we really take to heart that they're coming to us and entrusting the care and some, you know, a member of their family. Um, it can be, you know, an unhousing situation. It can be moving and now the place is no longer pet friendly. Okay. Um, you know, things like death in the family or for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it's a myriad of reasons. And they turn to us and go, help. Okay. And that's what we're there for. We're there to help. So it's never a judgment call. We are always very happy and like, we will walk you through the process. Because never this is for the health and safety of 100%, that animal. 100%, 100%, it's stressful for the pe every person involved and we wanna make it as comfortable of a process as possible. And so they don't leave feeling like they did something bad. They actually took into account they could no longer care for that animal and they're doing right by it. And that's why we're here. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, in the cases of, like, perhaps a, a death in the family yeah. and somebody has had a cat, mm -hmm. you know, we, in my family, we had a cat that lived to be 19. Yeah. Well, what happens if a cat is like 12, 13, or any animal is a senior animal? Mm -hmm. They're not as cute and cuddly as a kitten yeah. or a puppy, so how... 
do you find that forever home for the cat or for the pet that mm -hmm. isn't like right the cool kid right again it's kid in season but we have the our elder pets we all do and we all have them in the shelters and we do incentives again the social media is so good okay. about this uh, we'll do little um, video features or photo uh, shoots with our older uh, cats um, they especially the cats the fee is reduced be, um, I believe it's oh, okay. past 13 but I, I okay it's on our website it's on the website, <laughs> on the website. do not uh, say Jen said blah 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 um, but yeah um, they are a reduced fee because we know that an older animal becomes with a uh, higher vet care right, right. it's just part of, of or caring. like if they're FIV positive yeah, exactly and, and we okay. do have FIV positive cats and we have a really good success rate of placing them in great homes um, we have a great community that like will promote these animals that's what I love about social media we'll put out a post and I'll see like a hundred of my volunteers share that post and Yay. it just reaches out to everywhere so yeah excellent so I mentioned in the introduction, mm -hmm. vacation season is coming, yeah. school is going to be ending soon. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for people who want to bring their pets with them on vacation? Okay. I know that's a really broad no, question. And I love this because I used to do pet sitting and dog walking services before I worked the okay. shelter. So when I saw these lines of questions, I was like, uh, yeah, just make sure you have everything and be patient. Your dog or cat is going to be like, why am I going? Where, this is new. That's a weird smell. Um, yeah. You know, bring something that brings them comfort. Um, their favorite toy, a blanket, something with their scent on it. Okay. Um, something that can have a calming effect. Okay. Make sure they have a little place of their own, even if it's their crate opened up and made oh, all nice and okay. cozy with blankets and a, a stuffed toy or something. Something where they can have like a little bit of space their, of their own. Their home away from home. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And make sure you have, if, especially if they're on special diet, bring their food with because you, you don't know where you're going if right. you'll have access to that. Okay. How do you prepare the animal for a car ride or mm. an airplane ride? Right. Because, you know, a long time ago, I had lived in Florida, mm -hmm. and I moved to Massachusetts, and I had to get cats from Florida to Massachusetts. Oh. And How stressful was that? It was, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Our vet actually, and again, this is, you know, 25 plus years ago, um, we had to put the cat on Valium. I was going to suggest that, honestly. I don't think that has changed all that much. Yeah. You're going to do something that, like, distance related, that much stress on the animal, talk okay. to your vet. Get the little, okay. you know, doggy or kitty value. Because I'm just thinking, you know, pension. doggies are like, hey, I get your girlfriend right in the car. Oh, and cat's yes. like, no. Exactly. They don't want to be there. And you're just like, no, come with me. And they're like, yeah. so, yeah. Because usually a car ride needs vet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dogs are a different story. But cats, and even if you have a nervous dog, mm -hmm. talk to your vet. See about maybe getting a, you know, two weeks supply of whatever medication okay. just to kind of calm them down it's better for the animal and it's better for you um, yeah <laughs> remember my sister saying yeah my sister's cats on uh, my sister has a cat mm -hmm. that's you know really nervous so she's on Valium and somebody said well who's on Valium the sister or the cat <laughs> they're like like the cat there. but the sister needs to be um, <laughs> But speaking of vacations, mm -hmm. and you had mentioned, you know, having their nice little corner of the world. Yeah. How do you determine when to bring your pet versus when to keep them home? Because I'm mm -hmm. also thinking, like, if you're going to the beach and you rent a cottage, well, the animal's not allowed on the beach. So if you're out there all day, your poor animal's stuck in a crate. Yeah. Or... 
you know, the, the that's a really good point. I guess it depends on what type of vacation. If you're not okay. going to be in that spot, like you said, the animal can't come with you in every scenario. Like maybe you're going into a cabin in the woods and you're going to take great hikes with your dog. Fabulous. Or even a cat if you're just going to hang out in a cabin. Okay. That works. But if you're going someplace that's not maybe the most appropriate for that animal. Exactly. Yeah, that's when you kind of have to reach out. Do you have a trusted person in your life that can help, you know, watch the animal mm -hmm. in your absence? Or you hire a pet sitter for that X amount of time and uh, have a professional handle them while you're mm -hmm. enjoying your time away. So if you were to hire a pet sitter, because mm -hmm. you had said in a in a former in my former role, life in your former life <laughs> you were a pet sitter. Yes. Um, as a parent of a fur baby, mm -hmm. you don't want just anybody oh. taking care of no. your fur baby. No, I agree. How do you find a reliable pet sitter? Are there specific questions that you can ask? Mm -hmm. You know, I always found a great way is to go to your veterinarian and ask them if oh, they know okay. anyone to recommend. Um, a lot of um, vet techs or, you know, veterinary assistants mm -hmm. will do that as a side mm. um, job. So then you know if you're trusting the vet, you're trusting their they people. they already know the they know animal. Your animal so, oh. so it's a good way to kind of do that. Um, yeah, and if you have family, friends, they can give recommendations. If you have to go blind, definitely do that interview process. If you're going off of something like, say, care.com or okay. something like that, and see, you know, have a meet and greet with yourself present, that the animal and the person you're interviewing, and see, is this a good fit? Ask those okay. questions. See if you're comfortable with the situation. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, bringing your pet, leaving your pet at home, what about like a pet hotel or mm -hmm. a, you know, a kenneling service? Yeah. How do you determine if that's the right option? That can totally be the right option. And I guess that really depends on how your pet is. If your pet is like, I'm a homebody and please don't put me somewhere because I'm going to be too stressed, mm -hmm. then maybe find someone who will come to your home. If your animal is a little more flexible, can go into different environments and seemingly be okay, that could be a great solution. But maybe a doggy, if they always go to doggy it's daycare anyway. Exactly. Or oh, you have okay. a cat that's like, eh, I can lay around wherever I am. <laughs> Some cats are like that and some are like, no, I can't be anywhere but my home. So yeah, definitely it's a temperament thing. There okay. are great doggy and kitty hotels out there. Okay. What, uh, I don't know if we finished this question, but mm -hmm. you have volunteers come in yeah. to take care of the animals. You have a veterinary staff or yeah. just a veterinarian we have a veterinarian and we have some vet techs and yeah and then we have some revolving ones that donate their time to us mm -hmm. so what type of care so if someone yeah. let's simplify it if somebody were to volunteer wants to volunteer mm -hmm. how would they go about doing it Kay. and what would they actually do because you know i love animals but i don't want to work at a shop uh, at a shelter volunteering my time just scooping up poop from dogs and cleaning litter boxes. Right. I right. want to see the cute fur, fur yes, babies. Yes, of course. And that's why you're there. Love it. So yeah, if you want to volunteer, go to our website, lowellhumanesociety.org. From there, you fill out a brief application that I can then see what your likes, what your dislikes, what is your background? Maybe you've worked more with animals. Maybe you're a complete novice. You don't need to have one or the other. Okay. I just kind of want to know where you fit. And from there, you come to one of my orientations, and I talk at you for like about an hour <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, tour the shelter. But this is the important part, the meat and potatoes. Like, what do you do when you're here? Right. So I was training someone today, and like, say, a cat's 
Smalls uh, volunteer for the afternoon. They come in, they make sure all the animals, like the cats are clean and comfortable, they have food, water, and then they get to do an enrichment. Basically, Ooh. we get to play with the animals and make sure oh, they're- Oh, that's tough. It's a hard life. <laughs> and we de-stress them, we make, um, we made little, like, we were calling them sushi rolls for the guinea pigs. So we took, like, really? Yeah, okay. we were taking um, paper towel rolls and stuffing them full of chopped up vegetables that the guinea pigs oh, can then okay. rip open and have a little feast. So just, you know, things like that that keep working their mind and their senses. Oh, and it just, okay. then you can give them all the pets. It's really nice. Oh, it's real. Of scratches. course, we need you to clean. Of course, well, we yeah. need you to do all those things. You have an animal, there will be poop. But there's pretty much a hundred percent. But there's other things. If you're walking dogs, oh my God, you get to spend so much time <laughs> with some great dogs. I love the dog. Dog, join a gym. Yes, volunteer. Oh, for real, I've never walked so much in my life. So <laughs> please, you want to work out? Come walk one of my dogs. There you go. <laughs> what type of time commitment? is required for volunteers do they have to do x number of hours each week we or uh, yeah you know? great we ask if you are volunteering as you know animal care so cats smalls dogs two hours shift once a week for six months just so you get to know and we know that we have coverage for oh, okay. animals at that time right but i also have fosters who are as needed i also have a street team who works events for me and again that's mm, need, just okay. as needed i have people now working graphic design for me so cool. yeah okay. there, if you have something to bring to us we want to like utilize it. okay yeah it doesn't always have to be working hands-on with the oh, animals okay yeah speaking of the the what did you call it? the street the street team. Street team. Tell my, me more about that. My street team, they are rock stars. So they go out like um, we just did um, a, rabi a low cost rabies and microchip clinic at Ooh. our shelter Okay. Um, for the community. And they will, um, they were doing everything. They were running around the parking lot gathering information from everyone there. Um, they'll go to um, an event, like say we just did a community event in Chelmsford. They set up a table and they'll tell anyone who comes up, okay. who's our cute available animals, um, what's up at the shelter, give up that great information to the public. Oh, cool. And okay. it's really rewarding because you get a lot of stories of, oh, look at my cat that I adopted X years ago, or look at this dog, we love you guys. So. <laughs> It's really nice, yeah. I used to be a street team person. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> you love animals. I you love animals. I do all different I love aspects animals. of animals. I love there people. Let's bring it together. <laughs> As you were talking about certain events, mm -hmm. sometimes like pet stores, not to endorse any, but like Pet Cow yes. has an adoption day. Mm -hmm. Do they like partner with shelters for that? Yeah, How does that they work? They have in the past. Um, unfortunately, COVID kind of has made oh, okay. everything. Yeah. Uh, but we used to do the Petco in Acton like once a month and we would have a oh, table there. Okay. So um, hopefully that It'll can come back. Come back. Uh, things are coming back in dribs and drabs. Okay. But um, yeah, that's why I'm excited. I finally have a street team again. We Yay. can we can go out in the world and talk to people. <laughs> Yay. I'm kind of like Stop. going in every direction. Yeah. Um, volunteers can walk animals. Yeah. Um, anybody of any skill set can come and volunteer. Mm -hmm. If someone were to adopt, mm -hmm. like the random per well, not random, but the person who comes in and says, I want a dog. Do, does the Lowell Humane Society have like classes on obedience or getting your dog to follow you on a mm -hmm. leash instead of taking you for a walk? Oh, or do you like say, 
here are some classes available, go. Exactly, it's unfortunately just due to our size, so it's more the latter, but this is what we do. If it's a, it's, you know, your easy going dog, then we're like, cool, you got this. If it's a dog that's maybe needs a little more work, we do require that, um, you know, training deposit. Okay. So that follow up of like, and we will tell you, like, we have a dog right now who is on a training program. Okay. And we will give you all the information of, like, this is what we've been working on. This is how we're doing it. This oh, is the okay. classes we've been using. Oh, okay. um, so we will give all that information to the client and make oh, sure okay. that they have what they need to make it right. successful. Because you don't want them coming back no, in six months. No, and we will always take our animals back, no questions asked. Like, okay. that is what we strive for is that they stay with you. Who pays for all the care, like the food, uh, you know, because you said you had a food pantry yeah. and, you know, kitty litter and leashes and harnesses and cages and, uh, you know, hay for the, the small yeah, critters. Yeah, that's a great question. And it's, it's a lot, right? It's <laughs> a lot. And it's never uh, ending. <laughs> never ending. Um, we have a great system between uh, corporate donations. So sometimes pet stores will just once a month donate a, a oh, bunch of products, cool. which okay. is amazing and so grateful. Or we'll get um, food at a discount um, okay. for our animals. The pet pantry is strictly done by donations from the community, and we are wow. so grateful. They'll be like, here is some food for you guys. Okay. Um, yeah, we pay for everything with um, a combination of your amazing donations. We can't do it without that. And just some grants and just a lot of hard work and boots on the ground. Just wherever we can get that money. Okay. <laughs> what types of items are in desperate need like now? Right now, um, we just put up a post this morning because it is kitten season. So we were asking for things like um, KRM, which is um, replacement milk for kittens. Oh, like yeah. so kitten for formula. Kitten formula, literal oh, wow. kitten formula. Okay. Because we have a lot of what we call bottle babies where the mom oh. is no longer for whatever reason in the okay. picture and you just got a little kitten who is unweaned. So we need to feed them with formula. So we were l asking for um, you know, the little nipples and like little syringes so you can feed them and some, you know, milk replacement. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. But and just for normal item, everyday items, if you don't want to go to our Amazon wish list, okay. we can always use towels, blankets, sheets. Those need to be new, or nope. can you just like, okay, this your, towel's getting kind of frayed. Exactly, and, like I don't want this towel anymore. We'll take your towel. Our animals don't know the difference. They're <laughs> happy. Um, they just want something warm and they fuzzy. They just want fuzzy and clean, and yeah, they're happy. Um, so yeah, that's those are like the big things. Sometimes we'll do a push for office supplies because they always think oh, animals, right? Animals. And it's like, we have a business side to get keep things going, okay. so sometimes we'll need those things as well. Post-it notes, pa exactly. <laughs> Pens. Who knew? You know, laundry detergent. Oh you know, yes. to clean the the keep Ex those towels exactly. clean. Exactly. Okay. Yes. What kind of fundraisers do you do? You know, you mentioned the street team. I don't know if they work any fundraising they, or do you have fundraising oh, like a tails and ales or yes so okay we are in our 150th year this year which is very wow. exciting yes and in september we're going to have a big auction slash gala Ooh. so um stay tuned look at our um keep uh, looking on the yeah, website tickets should be going on sale in july okay um and yeah so but all throughout the year we do auctions we do um just different fundraising whether it be virtually or just even you'll see our little like buckets at places, you know, just the okay. store where you can put your loose change in, it go. all adds up. You want to round up? Exactly, like here you go. So yeah, that's what we do. But right now um, for May online, 
we have a twenty thousand dollar goal and we're about a quarter of a way get there okay. so we're getting there we're getting okay. there one donation one at a time. donation at a time no donation too small or too large <laughs> <laughs> we'll adopt yeah exactly it's for the animals <laughs> Can somebody like just go online and make a donation that 100%. way? Hundred percent. We okay. have a donation button on our website. Oh, um, to make it easy for you, um, we usually have QR codes. If you ever see our Ooh. logo anywhere, you can just go boop and give us a number. We'll happily say thank you. <laughs> you mentioned that it's kitten season. Are there other times of year? that you feel, or you as in the shelter feels mm -hmm. overwhelmed? Like about a month after Christmas when everybody mm. gets their puppy for Christmas and then just, That's a great, great, yes. Or Easter when everybody gets pet bunnies. I was or, just gonna bring up the Easter all situation. All right, I will be quiet and let you talk. No, you're, <laughs> no I love that you know this um, and more people need to know this. You get a pet, even if it's a small pet, that's a pet and it's a responsibility and um, you love your fluffy little bunny, but are you going to take care of it five, six, seven plus years down the road? Um, don't get an animal strictly for your child who will grow up and leave, and now you mm -hmm. still have that little animal. Right. So we see a lot of that kind of thing, okay. especially with the smalls. So it's just a good reminder these animals have a longer lifespan than you think, yes. and uh, they really want to be with you, and they're not just like, you know, a you know, living yeah. toy for your kids. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So, exactly. We do have these little bumps, whether it be, you know, kitten season or um, after a major holiday. Sometimes you'll see an uptick on uh, certain things. Okay. So, yeah. It's not I'm, like a board game or a stuffed animal. Yeah. It's a living creature. Exactly. So, think about this. Long term, think about it. Mm hmm couple of questions that I'm thinking about. Um, kitten season. Yeah. Where do the kittens come from? Are they like feral mothers that people turn them in? Or mm -hmm. do you sometimes get the pregnant mom? And yeah, where do all these kittens all come from? All of the above. Um, spay and neuter your animals, people. Um, <laughs> so a lot of times, um, it's a little of everything, so we'll get pregnant mama. I, we have a couple of pregnant mamas in our care right now. now can they stay in the shelter, or do they have to go to foster? One is in foster, and one is in um, sh the shelter, but in a special room. She's not. She okay. has a room to herself to oh, okay. be comfy and happy and let nature take its course. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they come. I had some lovely people just happen on a hike to find abandoned kittens in the forest. Wow. We've had people bring in cat, mother cat and kittens from dumpsters. It can be really Ooh. sad. Yeah. 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 And I don't want to get too dark with it. No. But no, but just know that these cats and kittens are in our care okay. and they're okay. And that that's why we're you here. Take care of them. We'll take care of them. If you find something like that, let us know, let your local shelter know. That's what we're here for. Are there any circumstances that you find where you are too crowded and have to turn animals away? <sighs> we do have a wait list sometimes for our dogs because we just have so just so uh, many dog kennels. Yeah, okay. But we will like say, hey, we're, you know, and if it's an emergency, we okay. rearrange. Can you like partner with other humane society chapters yeah. and say, hey, look, we have mm -hmm. a dog and we have no room? Yes, we do that quite often or we talk to animal control. Like, yeah, we have a network oh, okay. of people for that kind of thing. Um, I've done transports where I'm like, I will take all my bunnies to Western Massachusetts and they'll give oh, okay. an, us all their, like say, guinea pigs because we can uh, okay. get those out. So like, yeah, there is some trading involved. So okay. like everyone can <laughs> successfully house these animals, but we do keep it in state. Um, we are very community okay. focused. Okay. So you're not gonna see us say like, we're not taking from dogs Tennessee from Tennessee or, or Texas, okay. right? We're really 
here to serve the Lowell community oh, stretching okay. out to you know New, southern New Hampshire out west to close to Worcester that kind of thing where is other than the Lowell Humane Society where's the the next closest Humane Society to us would be there is a Nashua Humane Society oh, okay. um, and honestly I'm not sure I'm sure there are is another one like okay. probably I know there's one in Springfield there might okay. be something in the middle <laughs> okay well let's, let's hope so let's hope so you mentioned animal control yeah hypothetically somebody sees a stray dog Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. goes to animal control mm -hmm. animal control brings it to you mm -hmm. then the owner of said dog realizes that dog is lost yes. what kind of system is in process so somebody doesn't come and adopt that dog and then the owner comes and says where's my dog great yeah because they are family members they are family members so there is a seven day quarantine for all strays where we immediately put them up if they have a microchip, perfect. We can get okay. them to you immediately. If the microchip is up to date. Correct. How do you update, uh, I, I know tangent, how do no, you no. update the microchip? Oh, okay, you can go to the manufacturer's website and just kind of beep boop boop and that can, you can do it online. Okay. That is totally Is there fun. a way to tell which manufacturer, like when you scan it, does it say? Yeah, and we'll always okay. contact whoever is there and hopefully if it's not updated, we can still backtrack it. Oh, and we've had okay. good success on that as well. Okay, um, so like seven day quarantine. Seven day microchip. quarantine, microchip makes it so much quicker. We immediately put out a flyer, do our social media blast saying, we picture an animal found at this location you know call us okay and from there we try to make sure that it is your animal because if it's a cute little white dog you'd be surprised how many people are like that's mine yeah. maybe not <laughs> um you need to show some kind of proof that this is yeah. your animal pictures will suffice if you okay. have like a phone full of pictures like most of us most do. people do yeah, yeah. Just we're, look we're at your facebook page you know it's either food yeah. or cats you know exactly <laughs> so that's how that's how we know now at animal control mm -hmm. do they hold on to the animals first or do they just like they oh, some found a dog yeah it depends so sometimes they go up oh, find a dog and it's on our doorstep or sometimes they hold on to it okay I'm honestly i'm sure on how besides you know do they have space okay. what the criteria is but yeah we get animals stray animals okay. quite often from them so after that seven days if no one comes forward then we can begin the adopting out process oh, and figure okay. out you know let's get you to assuming that the microchip came exactly empty. assuming there's no microchip assuming there's nobody who's come forward now it's just a stray that's okay we're gonna try to adopt out okay with microchips again I'm going back yeah eons how many my cat one of my cats that i adopted was given a microchip at the shelter yeah and the technology was still pretty new where there were different chip readers and not all it wasn't a universal oh, thing has that kind of all, been as far as i can tell that is all i remember okay. those days and yeah, yeah i know i'm dating myself i am too <laughs> um but yeah no it's just like just one wand and we can oh, okay. get that information now it's not so fragmented thank goodness okay. what how terrible was that i know yeah it wasn't smart. But it's like, okay, I moved from Florida up here, and I'm like, I don't think I ever updated my microchips. <laughs> exactly. Or not my microchip, but my cat's. <laughs> hope you're not microchip. I hope I'm not microchip. <laughs> no, but exactly. So it should just all be one beep, boop, boop, and you're good to go. All right. Is there anything we haven't covered? I don't Any know. Any burning questions that, you know, um, mm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear. I'm thinking we talked about um, animal control yeah. and people getting up enough courage to bring the animals. Yes. How often do you just find animals like left on your doorstep? Unfortunately, too often it happens. And 
If you leave a donation on our doorstep, uh, we do get nervous about boxes, so just be mindful because um, we've had, you know, people just leave a box of cats or whatever on our doorstep. And I understand they're, they're scared. They're scared to come in. They're scared to talk to us. It's okay. a, they, feel the sh it, they feel it's shameful. We want to break that stigma. It's not okay. shameful. We'd rather you come inside. It's safer for the pet. It's safer for everyone involved. Just we are not here to judge you. We're here to help. So yeah, it happens and we just try to make sure that everything's accounted for and just go from there. <laughs> I keep thinking, you know, it still goes back to my original question yeah. of how do you not come home with 40 <laughs> cats, you know? <laughs> Oh, hi. It, it's hard. Um, my husband asks me that as well. <laughs> He's probably grateful that you don't come home with I a cat know. every day. I don't know. I think he thinks I'm the hard one. <laughs> we don't have more. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, you, you just know that they're going to a great home and you were part of the process and that's a really good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So. Okay, real quick. Yeah. Um, we got like less we got like a minute left okay but you mentioned luna yeah if you don't how do you name animals oh we have so much fun with names we have so much fun with names so basically of course if it's a dog or somebody's beloved pet and they know their name that's their name and we keep mm -hmm. that name if we get to name an animal, we just try to have fun with it. The last set of kittens, too, that I'm fostering, we were apparently hungry and named them Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, <laughs> and Postmates. So, <laughs> All right. where the shelter what runs on delivery, apparently. <laughs> it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we just we just have fun with it. We know that they'll probably get a different name from their yeah, new owner. Yeah, you owner, hope so, because Uber Eats is just kind of hard. Here, it Uber does. Eats, come here, boy. <laughs> Uber Eats. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't quite work, yeah, but it, quite work. we're having a good time with it. <laughs> so that's how that works. All right. Well, we are just about out of time. Awesome. So thank you so much, and thank I you. definitely want to keep up to date on your one hundred. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. I'm, I would be happy to come before that, and I promise I'll bring an animal next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring, yeah, then I'll be the crazy cat lady bringing 40 cats home with me. Perfect. Um, I think my kids won't mind. Um, <laughs> my husband might, but anyway, thank you so much. Thank it you. was a pleasure meeting you. It was a pleasure talking about animals, yeah. especially, you know, the cute furry ones. Yeah. Um, and I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening. I hope you have enjoyed our conversation as much as I have. And again, remember the mantra. What is it? Adopt, don't, don't shop. shop. Perfect. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful springtime, summertime. Good night, and I'll see you around town.